Jules here. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Come with me back to the past. It's, it's me. I'm a young kid. I've got hair and no beard at this point in my time. And I've just got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES. And what a time to be alive. I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was all about them boys and their rude dude toods. But unfortunately, the game absolutely spanked my chops when it came to the damn level. And I don't mean as in damn, as in like, god damn, it was difficult because it definitely was. I'm talking about it was under a literal damn. This water-based level was horrific. You had to get through on a time limit and defuse these bombs, all the while avoiding this jellyfishy style tentacle grabbing electro damaging seaweed that was there, and also electrical pylons, which begs the question if they were electric underwater, wouldn't it have just annihilated your health regardless? You had to be pixel perfect to get through this area unscathed. In fact, I still can't do it to this day. I have managed to get through it by the hair on my chinny chin chin, but I have not managed to do it with a full health bar. I don't think anyone has. For some reason, this video game has this kind of arcade mentality where it's trying to almost steal quarters from you, but you've already paid for the goddamn game. It wouldn't say that it ruined my childhood, but it definitely put a significant dent into it. I remember there just going like, oh, dad, can you help me get this through this level? And he sat down and he was still like, oh, don't worry, son, don't worry. And he doesn't sound like that, by the way. Oh, don't worry, son, I'll take care of this, man, yeah. And then he proceeded to get his ass handed to him as well. So it was a bonding experience of that failure. Cool. Carrying that forward into a later life, I tell you that much. Peace out. Levels that came out of nowhere for me, there's only one, one level only. It's the blood trails thing from the first Max Payne. Now I've heard, I was listening to Troy Baker talk about this on uh, the Play, Watch, Listen podcast recently. And he was referring to this blood trail level as, you know, this sort of audio sensory experience that it was actually quite pioneering in terms of getting you to navigate a level based on audio cues. And, you know, you're playing through the nightmare of Mr. Max Payne himself. He's trying to locate his child who, you know, he's haunted by the fact that his kid gets uh, killed at the very beginning and he's just in this nightmare and it's completely dark it's completely black everywhere and all he has to uh, locate where he is is a tiny blood trail that goes through the level it's like a little maze and you can fall off and you can die instantly and you can restart and it sucked but Mr. Troy Baker was talking about the fact that this kind of was this pioneering idea of following audio cues through a level but I didn't get any of that when I was a kid and I don't think most of us did either uh, I say kids teenager whatever when we played that level it was just infuriating it was just it, unlike anything else in that game Unlike anything else in that whole series, to be honest, they've never gone back to it, and Remedy have never done any other levels even remotely similar to the idea of following one single trail through darkness. Um, so maybe it was this pioneering thing um, to give it the benefit of the doubt, but for me, um, considering how much the first Max Payne just goes and how revolutionary at the time bullet time was um, and how amazing that game felt, crowbarring in this like nightmare scenario where you have to just sort of try and solve what is ostensibly a hedge maze in the dark, um, I absolutely hated that and it ground the game to a complete halt. So for me, a hard video game level that just seemed to come out of nowhere has to be Rainbow Road for me because as a child playing Mario Kart was like just such a good family pastime that we just always used to do. It was like every Christmas and birthday, like every time we would have a big gathering, it was like, let's play some Mario Kart. And obviously like being a kid and sort of, you know, trying to play that with like the rest of the adults, you sort of slowly start to kind of get better at the game. But um, I was never very sort of good at racing games anyway. So finally getting to that age where I felt like I could play it and do relatively well um, was really like a good achievement for me as, a, as like a young child. And I remember doing really well um, I'm finally playing Mario Kart with my family. I think it was like my dad and my cousins and like my uncles and stuff. And we were all playing Mario Kart. I was doing really, really well. And I think I was coming like second or first like, like a couple of times. And I was like feeling really good about myself. I was like, yeah, I'm finally doing really well at this game. Like I feel like I could sort of leave it here and just be like, yeah, you know what? I feel like I've, I've done well here for a, for a child, for, you know, my first proper game of Mario Kart. Um, <laughs> And then Rainbow Road comes along and, um, you know, when you hear Rainbow Road, it's like, oh, this sounds fun. Like, as a little girl, you know, a little child, I was just like, this sounds, you know, brilliant. Rainbow Road, like, yeah, sparkly rainbows and all this sort of stuff. Um, but it's just 
so ridiculously difficult and I absolutely hate it and obviously like as an adult now when you play it you know that it's going to be a difficult level and, and it's just fun so when you're constantly falling off and dying all the time it's just like ha 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 you know it's rainbow road but as a kid when you're like really like into the game and and you know um you know the competition is is there it's just sort of like no I, I was doing well like what the hell and then you start having tantrums because you're like dying constantly and it's like well I didn't die at all the last few rounds and I'm like oh and it's just I, I hate it rainbow road, even now I hate rainbow road it's sort of like I try to put on like you know a happy face and be a grown-up and it's like oh <laughs> rainbow road <laughs> love this one but deep down inside I'm like god damn it I'm never gonna win at this one I don't think I've ever come higher than like maybe fourth or fifth place and rainbow road I hate it I absolutely hate it now, when you think about Simpsons Hit and Run, you automatically think, oh, what's the hardest video game level in this? And that's got to be Alien Autopsy in the many parts. And I think you're wrong because that is not the hardest one. That can be quite easy if you know what to do. Um, I can usually do it, like, you know, without making a mistake. I know, I know it can be really hard, you know, having to not crash and uh, avoiding all the bloody traffic. And it can be really annoying. But honestly, it has nothing on what this level is and that is set to kill now what you have to do is buy a globex super pavilion car for 600 coins and you have to go around destroying all these gun stands throughout the map now the first main thing is you've got about less than two minutes to do it um, the second thing is that the car is really hard to, to handle um, the third thing is, is that your hit and run meter can go up very, very, very quickly, especially in the, the very populated area of the docks and it can be a massive nightmare when you're trying to, you know, go through these, all these gun stores and you're trying to avoid the police and trying to avoid all the traffic and it can, and it can get really, really hard. So honestly, Alien Autopsy looks like a walk in the park compared to this one. Um, usually you have about like 10 seconds to go before you um, start panicking and you're, you're at the last gun stand and then you've got like less than a minute to get back to the the Krusty Land Studios and my god it is so hard and usually I, I end up finishing the mission with about like a few seconds to go and Christ it literally comes out of nowhere because that entire section of bar two can be you know, not not necessarily easy, but they're not necessarily like really hard compared to that one mission. Um, everything else just seems like it's fine. And then that level literally comes out of nowhere because it's so hard, but yeah. Okay, so what I loved most about Crash Insane Trilogy isn't just that it reintroduced everyone to Crash and reminded them how much they love the character to the point we're now going to get a proper Crash Bandicoot 4. It's also because it reminded people just how piss hard Crash Bandicoot 1 was. Now, I played this as a kid as well as a grown up and both times I was just reminded about how much I sucked at this game, but it only gets hard after it lulls you into a false sense of security. If you've been playing, say, if you play the second game or the third game beforehand, the first few levels of this are just classic Crash. You know, you can do the jumps, you can do the spins, you can get to the end of a level without having to hit the point where you die and lose your lives and have to restart, then die and lose your lives and have to restart over and over again. And it seems pretty simple, but then you get to the native fortress, which comes quite early on and just kicks you in the ass so much and so hard with a bunch of sneaky little tricks that it completely changes your view of the whole game and you know from that moment forward you're in for a difficult time son you're in for stuff like the high road just absolutely having your life and making you hate this game because nature fortress um like i said it has a bunch of these different tricks up its sleeves including these um platforms that you need to jump and spin but they work on a timer so if you're not quick enough they will go back to being a wall and there's usually three in a row to get to the next part of the level and honestly even now as a grown man I still have trouble with getting the timing on those platforms correct and there's nothing worse than thinking you've got it getting right to the top and seeing it start to topple and you jump and you hit right into it and you fall right back down at the beginning of the level and even though you still got some lives left it feels worse than if you've died because you just feel like you've just lost all that progress 
and it brings out a level of frustration that only Crash Bandicoot 1 can. There are a bunch of other difficult games, Super Meat Boy, Dark Souls, nothing is quite as uniquely frustrating as the native fortress in Crash and the subsequent difficult levels. And that's not what you want out of a Crash Bandicoot game. You don't want it to make you feel like a grumpy old man. But the older I get, the grumpier it makes me. And I like going back to Crash 1 because it is a challenge that I like to overcome. But it's not, it's not the feel-good time, the feel-good free time of Crash 3 where you've got a, a Wumpa rocket launcher and you've got double jumps and you've got super spins. Like if you want to just have a, if you want to just chill out, you play a Crash 3. If you want to feel like you're never going to progress in life and you want to just smash your face with a brick wall over and over again, you play a Crash 1. And admittedly, sometimes, sometimes there's time for that kind of experience. But I'd like to know that I'm expecting it. I don't just like to get it five or six levels in and then it just oof, knocks you out. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs>